today I'd like to share with you a couple of the ways in which the computer science department here at Grand Valley has been embracing newer technologies to create what is a sustainable computing research environment. I'm going to explore a couple of projects that we've done recently and explain the key concepts behind each. The first one being Grunwolf. This was advised by Dr. Wolf, and it is what we call a Beowulf cluster. No doubt many of you are familiar with the Old English epic of Beowulf, in which our hero, Beowulf, is a great man who has amazing strength. He can accomplish tasks that would be impossible for ordinary men. And yet he's from an ordinary background, just like you or I. This is from this that we take the title Beowulf Cluster. So what's a cluster? A cluster is a single powerful computer made up of other smaller computers teamed together to accomplish a similar goal. And so when we talk about a Beowulf cluster, it is a cluster built from ordinary, readily available computer parts that are much the same as you'd find in your home PC or anywhere else. Instead of using extra uh, specialized parts that would be more expensive and require specialized knowledge. It's in this way that we can make Beowulf computers relatively inexpensive and lower the barrier of accessibility so that hobbyists, students, and scientists alike can share access to high performance computing. So what's the special sauce that makes this Beowulf cluster a Grunwolf or Green Wolf? It's the use of the Intel Atom processor. This processor was designed for use in mobile phones, netbooks, devices that we are very demanding about. We don't want to lose our battery after an hour of use, and yet we don't want to deal with a slow device. The Intel Atom manages to deal with those trade-offs very delicately consuming very small amounts of power. The benefits of using this in our cluster are multiple. The biggest advantage being the lessened power drain. The Atom processor, in its most potent form, uses only 13 watts. And all the way down at the bottom of the spectrum, uses just above half a watt. When you compare this with the Core 2 Duo processor from Intel, which is used in a lot of laptops and desktops that I'm sure you guys have at home, this starts out at 65 watts and goes all the way up to 150 watts. So we have a potential of saving 100-fold on the power consumption for this cluster. In addition to the power benefits that we've gained, having a cluster helps us with big number crunching problems. It's also an excellent teaching tool to help our students learn more about parallel algorithms, cluster administration, skills that'll be useful in the future. The Grunwolf team, and there's a picture of Grunwolf here with the team, is Andrew Belliner, Aaron Lindstrom, Brian Krauss, Brian Demers, and advised by Dr. Wolf. The project I was involved in doesn't have a fancy name, but involved virtualizing voice networks. And I'll explain more about that in a second. But first, a backstory. I was working with Dr. El Saeed. We were modeling uh, some complex voice networks, and we ran into a snag. We didn't have the equipment we needed to complete and expand some of our experiments. And even if we had them, we didn't have the space to use them. We couldn't have fit any more stuff in our lab. So we started to explore the idea of using virtualization. Virtualization is almost the opposite concept of what I explained with a cluster. It's where we take one single powerful machine and we emulate the existence of multiple other machines. So of course, when we got to using this virtualization and emulating, we emulated a voice network. And a voice network is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a network that carries voice. It could be as simple as a two-line telephone in your home office, 
or it could be thousands and thousands of complicated extensions and routing plans in a large corporation. And this was more the focus of what we were looking to accomplish. So the research mimics common setups that you would find in a big corporation. What were the benefits of virtualizing? We couldn't quite reach the same computing performance that we found with using dedicated hardware, a whole room full of hardware. But when you look at the trade-off and how close we came, within just 10% of getting the same performance, we took a whole room full of equipment and we turned it into a single box. We lowered our cost. We lowered our energy requirements, our space requirements, and the amount of heat that we were generating has a significant impact. In addition to that, the virtualization gave us expanded flexibility so that we could go out and change on a dime if we found a new or exciting topic to follow. The virtualization team was Ryan Nesbitt, Ryan Walsh, myself, and Dr. Al Said. Hopefully, these experiences can teach us more than just the academic or technical lessons that we learned on the ground, but to help us gain a more full understanding of how a sustainable computing research environment helps us here at Grand Valley and hopefully at other institutions to improve the academic excellence that we have reduce our impact on the environment, and continue a grand tradition of both sustainability and academic excellence. Thank you. <laughs>